trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be o'er, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is called of yonder, I'll be there. your destination <clears throat> and you're absolutely certain and sure that you're going to get there that's so important folks so so important we do not know when our appointed moment will come could be today could be tomorrow we need to be ready we need to be ready you have your Bible Open it up to the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 21. That's what we're going to be looking at this morning. I want to speak to you about, is Jesus your Valentine? When I was growing up, I never once heard my father say, I love you. I knew he did, but I never once heard him say it. I never doubted it. But I knew that he did, but I'd just been so glad to have heard him say. Folks, I'm saying to you that you need to let your spouse know, your parents know, your children know, your grandchildren know. Anyone who is really special and close to you, you need to let them know consistently that you love them. If some of your children's moved away or parents live away and you're talking to them on the phone before you hang up, say, I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. I love you, son. I love you, daughter. Let them know. That's so important. Don't ever take it for granted that they know that you love them. Let them know. John chapter 21, we read it in the opening this morning. Tis the season to say, I love you. Tis the time to say, be mine. Do you love Jesus this morning? Yes. Do you love Jesus? Really, truly love him this morning? Yes. Is he the Lord of your life? Are you totally committed to him as yes. the Lord of your life? That is yes. so important for yes. us. So, so important. The question for each of us this morning, where does Jesus fit into my life? Where does Jesus fit into my life? Does he fit into those that 
does he fit into those that I, I have a brotherly love for? Or does he fit into those that I have a sacrificial love for? Where does Jesus fit in our lifetime? Will I say, will we say to him, I, I love you like a friend or a brother? Or will we say to him, I love you more than anyone in all the world? Every day of our lives, not only do we need to say to the others around us that we love them, but we need to let Jesus know that we love him. He loves us every day, every moment of every day. And if we truly love him in such the same way, then we're going to let it show in our lives. This chapter is a very well-known chapter because it, it takes us back to Peter's denial of the Lord after he had been arrested and brought before some of those who were putting him on trial. You will recall that Peter is the one who said at the, at the upper room for the Last Supper, he said, Lord, I don't care what anybody else does. You can count on me. You can count on me. I'll die for you, Lord. And yet when he got over there around the far, Jesus was being brought to trial. And Peter was around some folks that didn't love Jesus. He denied the Lord three different times. And that's why Jesus asked him this morning in this passage of Scripture, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Folks, we need to love Jesus every day with a total commitment of our heart, our mind, our soul. Jesus asked Peter twice, Peter, do you love me? There are three kinds of love. There is the eros, E-R-O-S. <clears throat> it is an erotic love. It's a sexual love. It's not found in the scriptures. There's another kind of love that is found in the scriptures. It's called phileo, P-H-I-L-E-O or A-O. You'll see it two different ways. It's a brotherly love. It's a kind of friendship love. And then there is another third love. The second and third one, phileo and agapio, are listed in the scriptures and used many times, especially in the New Testament. Whenever it's talked about love, agapio love is love that is sacrificial. It is love that is first and foremost more important than any other kind. It's God's kind of love for you and me. What a difference that kind of love is. First, foremost, forever. And when Jesus talked to Peter that morning, he said, Peter, do you, do you love me with a sacrificial love? And Peter said, yea, Lord, you know that I love you with a brotherly love. Jesus asked him again, do you love me with a sacrificial love? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you with a brotherly kind of love. And the third time Jesus said, Peter, do you really love me with a brotherly kind of love? And Peter said, Lord, you know that I love you with that kind of love. You know that, Lord. What kind of love do you have for Jesus today? What we have for Jesus today, tomorrow, every day of our life, that's what's important, folks. That's what's important. And it's important not just one day of the year, but every day of the year of our lives. You know, Jesus knew and understood what kind of love Peter had in his heart. And he knows what kind of love you and I have in our hearts. He knows what's in there all oh, you know, he, he doesn't know. He can't look into my heart. Oh, we don't understand the teaching of the scriptures, and do we? He knows every thought. He knows every feeling. He knows every desire. He knows every word. He knows what's in our hearts, and he knows it moment by moment, day by day, all throughout the time. 
And so as we study this passage of scripture this morning, is Jesus my Valentine? Why should he be your Valentine? He should be your Valentine because who he is. Who is he? He's Jesus. Well, great preacher. So he's Jesus. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you and me? Because of who he is, he ought to be our Valentine. Who is Jesus? Is he not the Son of God? Is he not that one promised to Mary, thou shalt call his name Jesus? And who is Jesus? But, other, but none other than the very Son of God. An earthly human mother, yes, but a father who is God himself. Jesus is the God-man who came to walk upon this earth in the midst of his creation. Fully human. As human as you and I could be. And are. And yet he is God in the flesh. You ever stop and think about the fact that God in heaven above came down here to this earth and literally lived and walked and breathed and talked and ministered among us? That's who Jesus is. Who is he that he should be our Valentine? He is the Christ who is the Savior of mankind. He is the, he is the Creator of Jesus is the creator who brought this world, he and the Father, into existence. This earth upon which you, you walk every day, you live, he created. And your life, he created. He's the creator. And he's the redeemer. Where would you and I be today if, if it were not for Jesus who went to the cross? gave his life and what a terrible what a terrible death that was that he endured for you and I that he could pay for your sins and my sins and be our savior if we would just trust him and believe in him and acknowledge him and ask him to come into our heart why should Jesus be our valentine because of who he is because of who he is. And he's the one who's sitting there on the seashore that morning watching the disciples out in a boat fishing and making preparations to meet with Peter. Why should Jesus be our Valentine? Because he's all wise. Look at verse 6 if you will. The disciples have been out there and have fished all night these these few disciples, they've been out in a boat. Peter said, I go fishing some more. And said, well, we're going to go too. And they've been out there fishing. They've fished all night. And they haven't caught a thing. At least they were honest fishermen, weren't they? <laughs> uh, haven't caught a thing. Fished all night long and haven't caught a thing. Jesus knew that they hadn't caught anything. Because in verse 6, what does it say in verse 6? He says, Cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. Jesus is all wise. He knew where the fish was. He's, he's 300 feet away from where they are. 200 cubits at 18 inches, a, a foot and a half, that's 300 feet. That's a football field. And he said, cast your net on the right side. And when they did, they found the fish, didn't they? Jesus is all wise. They had fished all night and not caught a thing. <clears throat> you know, one of these days, he's going to ask you and I, have you caught anything? Have you caught anything? Depends on how uh, what kind of a fisherman we are, maybe, huh? Some fishermen, do, they, they, they just uh, they don't catch anything, but they can come back and tell you quite a story. But, folks, when we, we, when we try that with the Lord, it just isn't going to work. <laughs> it just is not going to work. He's going to know. 
you're going to know. And if we caught one this long and try to make it this long, he's going to know. Have you caught any fish? Have you ever led anyone to the Lord? That's what he's asking us. Have you ever sat down and shared Jesus with anyone, Christian? Have you ever led someone to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior? Have you caught any fish? Hmm? He's all wise. He knows everything about you and I. He knows everything about this world. He knows what happened yesterday and he knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Aren't you glad that that's the kind of Savior, that's the kind of Lord that you have? That's the kind of Jesus who is your Valentine? Aren't you glad? Can you find a better Valentine than that who knows everything? Hmm? I don't know that we can, can we? You'll find in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 <clears throat> that he said there have no temptation taken you. He's all wise through and through. All wise through and through. What you need. He knows how to guide you. He knows how to strengthen you. He knows how to equip you. He knows how to prepare you. He knows how to empower you. That's the kind of wisdom Jesus has. That's why he ought to be our valentine. Notice also that he is the provider of all the needs that we have. In verse 6, what is it he said? Cast your net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. And they cast therefore and were not able to draw in. How many fish did they have? 153. Wow, boy, that was a catch, wasn't it? 153 fish. That was quite a catch, wasn't it? The provider for all of our needs. Jesus. Every need you have, he provides for. I trust that we know that he's provided for those needs. And that every day in our life as we pray, God, this is a problem. God, this is something I need help with. God, this is something I'm, I'm struggling with. God, this is something that I don't know what to do with. He's the provider. If we're struggling with our finances, if we're struggling in our marriage, if we're struggling in our, our emotions, whatever it is, he's the provider. There isn't anything that he cannot and does not provide for us in the will of God. There is no other one who can provide for you or me like Jesus does. Can you name anybody who would be a greater provider than Jesus? No. Wow. No, not at all. And then if you look down to verse 9, he's unlimited. He's unlimited. Down in verse 9, what does it say? The disciples, when they came to land, they saw far and coals and fish laid thereon. He's unlimited what he can do. He said to the disciples, have you caught any fish? No. Throw your net on the right side and three hundred yards out, they caught 153 fish. But you notice, the Bible doesn't say that Jesus had a Zebco 33 rod night reveal laying down there beside him, did it? He didn't say anything about it. he had a net to cast out and draw in. Didn't need to. Didn't need to, but he had a fire going. And he had fish already cooking on the fire when, when they came in. Jesus is the provider for his people. Do you know anybody that's a greater provider for you folks? Whatever your needs are, whatever my needs are, whatever it is that we're struggling, whatever it is that we're dealing with, our nation's in a mess, yes. And we could just get all wound up and struggle in our mind. And what are we going to do? How are we going to do? What, where are we going to end up at? Just trust in the Lord, folks. That's what it's all about. He's the provider. Hasn't he provided for you and I thus far in life? Has he ever let you down? No. 
You may not have noticed his provision, but he's never let you down. If he has, then you don't want to trust him. You don't care about him. But I'm here to tell you that if you've prayed about something, Jesus has never faltered and failed to be your provider. I trust that we've seen his provision, felt his provision, known his provision. And what is the greatest provision that he has for you and me? Is it not our salvation? Is it not the security of our being? Is it not that our sins are forgiven? Is it not that we are assured of heaven and a place there in the kingdom of God in the presence of Jesus forever and ever? Is it not that he's provided for us so that we don't end up in the lake of fire like so, so many are going to end up one day? The bulk of the nations, the bulk of the people of the nations are going to end up there. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Narrow is the lead way that leadeth unto life. There are not many people going to make it to heaven because they don't know Jesus or they know him, but they've never really truly given their lives to him. All right, so he is the unlimited person. He is also loving and patient and compassionate and forgiving. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to the disciples, he's already seen them a couple of times. In Matthew 28, 10, he said, go into Galilee and there I, you will see me. They had waited. They had grown impatient. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? When's he going to when's he going to come? And so Peter said, I go fishing. That's what led up to this experience. And the other said, Well, we're going to go too. We're going to go too. And yet, this Peter who had earlier denied Jesus three times, and now when the disciples come to to shore, Jesus says to Peter, Peter, come over here. I want to talk to you. And he pulled Peter aside. And this man who had denied Jesus and whose life was crushed in that denial, Jesus called him over to his side and he said, Peter, Peter, do you love me? I can almost imagine Peter not wanting to come to Jesus because of that denial. I can almost imagine Peter just, oh, he's what I have done to him and, and he wants me to, oh. Look, in the tenderness of the heart of Jesus, he said, Peter, come over here. Come over here, Peter. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me with a sacrificial love, Peter? You denied me. He didn't say that, but that's what had happened. Now I want to know, do you really love me? Peter said, I love you like a brother. I have an affection for you. Peter, do you love me? Do you have that sacrificial, uncommitted, non-commit, uh, fully committed love for me? Am I truly the Lord and master of your life? Peter says, I have an affection for you. I have a brotherly love for you. And then Jesus said, Peter, do you even have a brotherly love for me? Do you even have an affection for me? Oh, Jesus, you know I do. You know I do. What kind of love do you have for Jesus today? What kind of love are we going to have for him tomorrow? Oh, it's church day, so I'm in church. What's that mean? It should mean that we have a deep abiding love for Jesus. But we're not going to be in church tomorrow. Are we going to love him tomorrow? Yeah. Is he going to be our Valentine tomorrow? And the next day and the day thereafter and when things don't go the way we would like and there are troubles and difficulties in life, are we still going to love him? 
with a sacrificial, fully committed heart and life unto him as the Lord of our lives? That's what he's asking us. That's what he's asking us. He should be our valentine because of what he does. He reveals himself. Look at verse 1. Jesus showed himself to the disciples in verse 1. You know, it's hard to love someone that you don't know. It's hard to love someone who <laughs> you, you're just not really sure where they're at. And yet Jesus, the Bible says, showed himself again to the disciples. He wanted them to see him, to know him, and to understand that his love for them was greater than anything they had ever experienced in their lives. And so Jesus reveals himself to them. He was revealed in the word. He's revealed in, the, in, the, in his flesh. He's revealed by the Spirit of God to us in our lives. And he invites us. He said to the disciples, come and dine in verse 12. Come and dine. He wants to fellowship with you and me. He wants to have that close relationship with you and me. He wants to be the greatest friend that we ever could find and know. He wants to be one who sticketh closer than a brother. That's who Jesus is. And so Jesus, Peter, do you love me? Well, Lord, you know I love you. So feed my lambs. Feed the little children. Feed the, feed the new converts, Peter. Feed the handicapped. Feed those who are struggling in life. Feed those who seem to be lost in the society of the world. Feed those who are struggling to find their way along the path. Feed them, Peter. Feed them. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Then feed my sheep. Feed the adults. Feed the church. Peter, go forth and help them all to understand who I am and what I am and what it's all about. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love? Yes. Then feed my sheep. Okay. What's he saying to us? He's saying that we have a job to do, doesn't he? He's saying we have a work to do. Peter became one of the greatest men of God of all time. As he went forth now with a commitment in his heart and life and understanding that Jesus still loved him. And he said, feed my sheep. I've got a job for you. And Peter went forth to do that and fulfill his purpose in life. You know, that's what you and I are called to do. That's what we're called to do. He includes us in his mission, doesn't he? Feed my sheep. Then Peter said, well, you know, what about him over there? What about him? Jesus said, don't hear, don't pay any attention to him. You just, you just do what I ask you to do. You know, we need not to look around and see what somebody else is doing and say, well, God, what about him? We just need to be concerned about ourselves and how are we doing? in our service to the Lord? How are we doing in our commitment to Jesus Christ as the Lord, as the greatest friend we've got, as the one who loves us more than anything else and the one to whom we have said we will love you with that sacrificial love, that full love of our heart. And so as you look at this, as you see this in this passage of scripture, <clears throat> Do we, do we love Jesus? Yes, we do. Is he going to be our Valentine every day of the week? He's not asking for a card. He's not asking for flowers. He's not asking for cookies. He's not asking for you to take him out to dinner. He's asking for you and I and every follower to put him on the throne of our heart every day day of our life. 
and to love him and to commit ourselves. And he has committed to you and I the greatest of all work. And that is to go forth and feed the lambs and feed the sheep. We weren't called to be a Christian just to go to church and go home and go about our task. First and foremost of, of being a Christian, irregardless of what else we do in life, irregardless of whoever is around us in life, irregardless of what we do for a living, irregardless of what we have, and the items around us, the first and foremost task we have is to share Jesus, is to feed the lambs, is to feed the sheep. It's to go forth with the message of Jesus. Do we love Jesus enough to do that? Do we love him enough to do that? Revival's coming. Oh, how we need, not only to prepare ourselves, not only how we need ourselves to get ready for that, but how we also need to start zeroing in on someone who needs to know Jesus and bring them. Pray for them. Bring them. Be that kind of a friend who will feed them and care for them as a shepherd. That's what he's after. That's what he's after. Let's stand together as we have our hymn of decision this morning. Number 634, Lord, I'm coming home. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Have you made him the Lord of your life? Maybe you're here this morning and you've kind of faltered along the way. We do that sometimes. We do that sometimes. None of us are perfect, folks. Sometimes we kind of lay down on our commitment to the Lord. But when the Lord speaks to us and says, Let's get this right. It's an opportunity to recommit our life to Do you need to do that this morning? Do you need to move your church membership as we stand the same? 634, Lord, I'm coming home. Won't you come?